Hello and welcome to the Kimanas Park Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we recap select races from Saturday, February 24th, as well as Sunday, February 25th. 21 races were on offer over the two-day race carnival. Saturday's Champions Day race card had the coveted chairman's plate as a main event, while Sunday's feature race was the Allen E. Billy Williams Memorial Trophy. Let's begin with race two from Saturday. This was run in honor of the 2023 champion breeder Ham Stables, a maiden special weight event for native bred three-year-olds going six and a half furlongs, a small field of six with two debutants in the lineup, King Pie from the Anthony Nunes Barn and the Hickory Slim out of the Ian Passard camp. They're often racing. King Pie steps a bit slowly and is left at the back of the field. Hickory Slim goes into an early lead right on the inside of Hickory Slim that is a don't tell Lulu. So don't tell Lulu now assumes the lead from Icarus Slims. Sp Spraga tracks them in third. Then comes Buzz Marie and King Pie waited with at the back of the field. They head toward the four furlong point and it is Don't Tell Lulu being hounded by Spraga on the outside, right against the rail, that Hickory Slim. Then comes Buzz Marie and recovering now, that's King Pie. They've left the four and head toward the three furlong point, and it is Don't Tell Lulu on a two and a half length lead from Hickory Slim right there in second. Then comes Spraga behind those and hustled up for more. That's King Pie and racing at the back of the field, that's Buzz Marie. But Don't Tell Lulu has kicked away about four lengths in front of Hickory Slim, tiling in second right there on the outside and coming on now that's King Pie but it's Don't Tell Lulu is kick, kick, kicking clear at the furlong and a half pole Don't Tell Lulu is still on that lead King Pie wind up and hearts for more it's Don't Tell Lulu King Pie begins to come forward there at the furlong pole Don't Tell Lulu still in front King Pie begins to come forward nicely it's Don't Tell Lulu tying up a bit and now King Pie comes a calling but Don't Tell Lulu is finding more King Pie trying to fight back Don't Tell Lulu Don't Tell Lulu beats King King Pie, then comes uh, Ikri Slim, got tied for fourth between Spraga and uh, Buzz Marie. So we have back-to-back -back upsets to start the Reggae 6, and we started off with 689 tickets, and after leg two, we're down to 47, and I think that could be a record low of the live takedown after the first two legs of a Reggae 6, and uh, probably have to ask uh, the IT department to check that, but uh, from leg one to leg two, I went down to 47 tickets. I don't recall ever seeing such a drastic reduction from the first two legs of the Reggae 6. So we could very well be in carryover mode for the Reggae 6. And it's been a while since we've had a carryover in the Reggae 6. So uh, 13 to 1 race one, fair it is. 9 to 1 race two. Don't tell Lulu. Six time champion jockey Omar Walker there for trainer Alfred Brown. And as I said, preview time, this one was fourth. Actually, was. Uh, Sixth, but beaten behind interesting times ahead who was third. Interesting that times ahead got six and three quarter lengths and don't tell Lulu got twelve and three quarter lengths. So six lengths behind interesting times ahead. Who came back and won twice, inclusive of the Jamaica two year stake. So the four lines were fairly encouraging for Don't Tell Lulu. Blinkers on, lay six for the first time. Change of barn to Alfred Brown. Good job. All and sundry. Six-time champion jockey Omar Walker with the win aboard the Alfred Brown conditioned Don't Tell Lulu, a three-year-old filly who was bred and owned by Norris Anthony Finn. Our next recap race from the Saturday card was the day's feature, the Chairman's Plate, which was a highly anticipated rematch between the 2023 Mooty Mile winner Rough Entry and the Super Philly, successive reigning horse of the year, Atomica. A small field of five was declared to go as a seven and a half for a long strip. This is the chairman's trophy, field in line. Send the half furlongs thereof. A rough entry gets a smart break and gets that lead. Atomica now rushes up to challenge early. Is that a fact racing just in behind them with Neostar and Rainsville as expected at the back of the field as they go down the far side? Atomica now goes on and takes that lead from rough entry, settled down in second, they leave the six. Is that a fact? Races in behind them, Neostar right alongside, and at the moment, Rainsville needs help as they charge past the five. The Philly Atomica 
There goes rough entry on the outside. Is that a fact? Gets to run against the rail, and these three abreast as they charge toward the half mile. Neostar needs to find three or four lengths to get to them, and Rainsville needs help as they leave the half mile and come spinning away now toward the 7th, 16th rough entry. And is that a fact? Now go on. Atomica the filly has faded. Neostar is racing further back in fourth, and last of all remains Rainsville as they're about to arrive at the 5-16th, and it is the Mute Mile winner, a rough entry who has taken charge. Is that a fact now trying to run him down, but rough entry looks strong at the moment. Is that a fact with the lightweight now asked to close upon the rail? Atomica is trying to fight back, but it is a rough entry and Shamari Muir who have that lead. Is that a fact now coming on the outside with a tremendous kick at his rough entry under a drive? Here is Is That a Fact with the lightweight and Is That a Fact now snatches the lead in the chairman's trophy. Rough entry can't answer the late kick of Is That a Fact is that a fact? And Jordan Barrett take the chairman's trophy. Atomica may have snatched second from rough entry fading. Then Rainsville and Neostar. The chairman's trophy goes to the lightweight. Is that a fact? 46 kilos or 101 pounds with the lightweight apprentice Jordan Barrett in the side of a champion trainer Jason Acosta and the champion owner Carlton Watson. They get the victory in the chairman's trophy after that uh, impressive victory at the mile. Eight and a half lanes playing 139. Prior to that on New Year's Day, though, Atomica beat Is That a Fact by some five lengths over eight and a half for those. And uh, Is That a Fact pounced on Atomica at the quarter pole there, first by head. But then Atomica quick no way to win by five lengths. Today, Atomica finishes in second. Now, near the three four on point, or three and a half furlongs out, she got pinched back in between horses when Is That a Fact and Rough Entry went on with it. So she had a bit of a traffic there. And she ran it strongly and came back and finished second, beating the higher thought of rough entry. So in the end, Atomica, that's what they call running two races, basically. She tried to go to the lead in a, with an intent to make all, and then she was taken back and she came again. And that's very difficult to do at this level of competition. You don't run two races in one event and win. So she did very well to finish in second and in turn, beating her recent conqueror rough entry so for all of those fans who are saying how oh, comes michael key and tip atomica to beat rough entry what him thinking about i don't understand well you have a thing called situational handicapping which is what i do for every race that i preview and i analyze and i handicap so the situation that unfolded in the mute mile was not in favor of atomica today there was an unfavorable situation as well when she was pinched back for space nearing the midway point of the contest. So one thing's are sure, the horse of the year will be back. A massive upset for the two favorites as Jason Acosta's Is That A Fact with Jordan Barrett in the saddle puts on a showpiece performance in the final half of a furlong to beat Atomica in second place who got her revenge on rough entry who finished in third. Rainsville was the other top four finisher. Robert Darby spoke to trainer Jason Acosta and the jockey Jordan Barrett after landing their memorable victory over the highly touted favorites. Champion trainer Jason Acosta, um, looking on the race, Jason, um, your horse was easily the best coming in at the handicaps and at the works. Six furlong in one thirteen four. There was no other horse working so well. How confident were you seeing the handicaps and that brilliant work um, in preparation for this event? Well, um, I thought I had a really good shot. Um, I was, uh, I'm running against two very good horses, so, you know, and there's always a doubt, but I thought I had a really good shot at the handicaps and um, the way he's been training. All right, um, rough entry looked all over when I turned in for home, but your horse made a big move at the half mile, coming to the tree. She took closer orders from there. Could you just take us through the race? How confident were you from there, and, and what are your thoughts on the big finish? Well, I, I was very worried leaving the three because um, um, Rough Entry was moving much the best. But um, I still had a little hope of return for home because um, with the lightweight, I, I, I always thought he would finish up really well. Um, so what's next for Is That A Fact with this big win? And, um, you know, definitely she looks like the most improved horse right now in the country. So what's next for Is That A Fact? Well, um, you know, we'll see how he comes out of the race and, you know, we'll pick his, um, pick his spots throughout the year because um, definitely the, um, um, the objective has got to be the Monte Mile at the end of the year. So um, we'll pick his spots and, uh, and go from there. Thank you very much, Jason. Congratulations once again.
That's Jason DeCosta, the champion trainer. And here we have Jordan Barrett, well ridden by Jordan Barrett. Jordan, the splits of the event was 23, 4, 46, 3, 1, 11, and 2, finishing in 1, 32, and 1. Leaving the half mile when rough entry looked very comfortable on that lead. Were you worried or you knew you had this one in the bag from there? Well, not really worried, just a little bit, because... I know it's a good, very good horse, you know, so um, within myself, I just have to say, I work with the chain of instruction and according to the race is running. She worked up, he worked a brilliant one, 13 and 4. Were you the one who worked and how confident were you after winning, after you saw that win by eight and a half length, beating Sistine Treasure and co company and now working one, 13 and 4. How confident were you after seeing that work? Well, it wasn't me working that time, but yeah. I'm very confident in it because I watched the race win the last time with Aladdin. So I'm very confident. At what point did you know she, he was a winner? When I'm leaving the tree for marker, tree for Alan marker, yeah, and I uh, make my move behind Ruff Entry. I feel he responded to me. So, you know, with, with Ruff Entry, with the 57, I know I got him. One last question. Um, at the two furlong marker heading to the furlong pole, rough entry started to kick once again. Your horse joined him and he quick kicked again, was full of fight. Um, were you worried at any point that you would have passed him? Yeah, I was a little bit worried because he was like drifting over when he saw me coming. So I was like, is my horse going to back up or what? But I continue sticking my left hand and continue riding him. Race 8 from Saturday was a restricted allowance event going 5 furlongs straight. An 11 horse field reduced to 10 with a scratch of Don Pablo from the 8th draw. 5 time champion jockey Trevor Simpson OD was aboard the Patrick Smelly conditioned Spitz and Can in gate number 1. Ready for a start. They're off and racing. She's an aviator, does everything wrong and gets rid of the rider. Simply sensational though, got a good start closest to us. Coalition is right there too. Babla is also early. And over on the far side, that's Ertigal. And Spitzen Khan way over on the far side. It is simply sensational. Coalition and Babla. This is where the action lies. Just behind them, that is Ertigal as they're going to come out to the shoot that way. They're sp spread right across the track, though, and it is Babla and the Coalition. Simply sensational right under the stand fence and could just be the overall leader. Babla is traveling well, too. Coalition left out of it a bit, but Babla is really tearing up the course, coming to the furlong pole. It's Babla in front, Coalition and Simply Sensational. This is where the race lies. Babla looks to have the overall lead. Coalition is darting across on the far side and coming forward, but Babla driven for road. She's worth it. Babla in front and Babla beats. Babla will beat. It got tight for second, though. It looks like Coalition in a photograph with Dream Warrior and a Simply Sensation. Steen is next. Another upset winner on the Champions Day card in the form of Babla, ridden by Javini Pan for trainer Philip Lee, making all the running. At odds of 9 to 1, Babla graduates from non winners of 2. Runner up was Coalition, good exact appeal there, $2,167. And the Quinn Plus is a must, $1,166. You have 49 tickets intact on the Twilight 6 with over $4.8 million in that net pool. So right now you are at $100,000 apiece. You keep alive for the next two legs of the Twilight 6. Javani Patterson aboard the 9 to 1 bed. Babla makes light work over the 1,000 meter strip covering the distance in one minute and one-fifth of a second with a win margin of two and a half lengths in front of runner-up Coalition. The ninth race on the Saturday card was the 2023 champion owner trophy event. This was a restricted allowance event going six and a half furlongs or 1,300 meters. Three trainers fielded double entries from the 10-horse lineup declared to start. Field and I for the Carlton Watson, 1,300 meters, six and a half furlongs thereof. Amazing Force just misses it, along with Chesney relegated to last. 
On the back stretch, they lead the six, come home to me. Now dashes through, gets that lead. Run, Julie, run, Allegiance in a tight grouping. Riches to Rags is right there. Fast and Furious links in between horses. A Pope's Lady with that group, just about five lengths, separates them as they charge away now toward the half mile. Amazing forces a further four lengths back on the outside. Blue Sensation running on the rail. A break back to Lucy in the sky and a trailing the field. It's a Chesney as they've left the half mile and run the turn for home. 7.16th remaining come home to me, pressed now by a run, Julie run. These are the two main contenders as they slip past the three. Pope's Lady needs to find three to get to them. Just on the inside, Riches to Rags. Fast and Furious Links and Amazing Force team up in behind. Allegiance has more to do. Lucy in the Sky now making a wide run with Blue Sensation, but Come Home to Me continues to show them her back end. It's Come Home to Me with that lead, and now responding to the left-hand stick. Run, Julie, run the gray in hot pursuit. Pope's Lady let loose on the outside. Amazing Force now gathers momentum down against the rail. It's Come Home to Me. Watch Amazing Force now closing with a scorching kick down against the fence and now amazing force grabs the lead close home under terrific Tevin Foster he notches his double they win by three or more come home to me is second run Julie run third riches to rags is next Pope's lady is fifth amazing force delivers a victory second ever basket on debut right into a ball saw fun can done that one won by eight lengths in one twelve and two for six furlongs today Nothing of the caliber of phone can done present, and you get a victory from Amazing Force. Where the Shane Sloan's stride had to do it from off the pace, but finished very strongly. And that was Tevin Foster's second win for the day. So he started off on 18, two clear of Radish Roman. He's now on 20, but that makes him four clear of Radish Roman. Leading rider in the Jockey Championship race, Tevin Foster adds another win to his tally with a skillful rider aboard the Philip Fiani conditioned amazing force. They cover the trip in a minute, 21 and 3 fifths of a second, a win margin of a three and a half limbs. The tenth and final race from Saturday was an overnight allowance event for three-year-olds and up, named after the champion three-year-old for 2023. Tevin Foster was looking for a natural double aboard the Richard Azan trained and conditioned burlap. They're off and racing, that's a good line. As a power blast into an early lead, we have to why that is KP Choice. And KP Choice now goes on from Qatar, but Burlap is right there too. On the outside, the Goodwich as they go past the four furlong point on the course, heading toward the, the uh, three. Then comes Milos racing back there, along with power reversing. Then comes on the uh, big, big daddy, Snowflakes comes next. Then comes uh, Get a Pepsi behind, Get a Pepsi brings, and uh, at the back of the field, that's Ring Charmer there. Coming at the top of the lane, and KP Choice is in front, but here comes on the outside, the Goodwitch, KP Choice keeping on from the Goodwitch. Burlap is also coming on, coming down the middle of the racetrack and coming to, that's Kataba right against the rail, and also coming on and that's me lost, but it's KP Choice. They're all staring at the back end of KP Choice coming to the half of prolonged pole. It's KP Choice in front. Get up from the Goodwitch trying to come forward, but it's KP Choice in front and begins to pull away. KP Choice beats me lost. The Goodwitch then comes Brinks and maybe power back in fifth. Trainer Richard Townsend's KP Choice with Robert Hardball Halladine in the saddle takes the final event on the Saturday card, beating the likes of Milos, the Goodwitch. Brinks and the trailing power who rounded off the high five. It's now time for a break on the Caymanas Highlight Show. On the other side, we'll recap select races from Sunday, February 25. Welcome back to the Caymanas Highlight Show. In the second half of our presentation, we'll recap select races from the Sunday, February 25th race card. We pick up from race one. This was a made of condition event for native bred three-year-olds and up Phillies only, a division one event. An unpredictable field of nine was declared to start with six debutants. They're off for the first. Little Maggie misses it with another mission. Sipping in sunshine now plays catch up. Narissa's angel goes for it, hit and run right alongside, just ahead separates them. Can see her racing on the outside, Divine Diva making ground on the rail, another mission has now picked up and needs five lengths to get to those leaders as they leave the half mile and run toward the 7-16th. 
A break back to sipping on sunshine. Rackdom is there, and at the back of the field, it's a Roman princess. They blast past the three. They're on the run to the 516th, and Nerissa's Angel sets the fractions and leads up by some three lengths. Another mission with a purpose now begins to cut into that lead right there near the rail and making ground. That's hit and run as they're into the top of the lane, but can they catch Nerissa's Angel? That's the question. The stick comes out in the right hand, and Nerissa's Angel and O'Shea Nugent are away from them. Here now is Sipping on Sunshine, beginning a run on the outside, but still, Narissa's Angel battling to hold the lead. Sipping on Sunshine, switch down against the rail. It is Narissa's Angel with that lead. Sipping on Sunshine, trying desperate to get to the leader, but they won't catch Narissa's Angel. Narissa's Angel wins it close between Roman Princess. Sipping on Sunshine, then can see her. Rack them is fifth. That's uh, Narissa's Angel at odds of 10 to 1. Winning on debut, two-time champion apprentice O'Shea Nugent right in return to Alfred Brown and owner Garfield Brown. 3 to 1 on the morning line, my second choice. And he goes, she goes over 10 to 1, makes all the running and upsets the up card. Now I always tell you about those first time starters that are busting the clock. When they come to race time, anything can happen. And we just didn't see anything from hit and run at all. It was another debutant who wasn't a Blazing exercise track that made all the running quite convincing too. In the picture there was Nerissa's Angel. Roman Princess ran on to be second at long odds, the exacta. 12,873. The Quinnell Plus is a must. 24,000 plus in dividends there. Super Factor Payout, race one, 186,000 plus in a nine horse field. And the high five was not spotted. Carry the high five with the big favorite hit and run. Finishing off the board. Trainer Alfred Brown's and Nerissa's Angel shakes her maiden tag on the first time of asking with an impressive display of speed while being carefully handled by the experienced Kevin Foster in the saddle. The sixth event on Sunday was another maiden condition event, this time for native bred four-year-olds and up. A field of 12 declared to start with the 10 horse Benson showing a lot of stable confidence as of two to one favorite in the betting. They were off and racing, knock them dead. Is pinched out and left at the back of the field. Glittering Magnum rushes through for that lead. Benson rushing up on the outside. So Benson in front, Glittering Magnum settled right against the rail. Toots in the middle, right on the outside of those that read my lips. Then comes Sir Wang Dun. Xylophonic Steel comes next. Then comes Cruising again, Roaring Thunder. You look okay. Knock them dead, recovering after that bad break. Then comes clowning around and left at the back of the field, legally hers. They are coming at the top of the lane and Benson skitters away about five, six lengths in front of this field, turning into second. That is Toots right against the rail. That's glittering Magnum. Sir Wang Don is wound up and asked for more, but it is Benson still in front. Xylophonic Steel is coming forward nicely. Also coming on, that's Toots. It's Benson running out of gas, but still in front. Xylophonic Steel rushing up on the inside and Xylophonic Steel joins Benson and now goes on. It's Xylophonic Steel in front. Benson trying to hold the second. Sir Wang Don is also flying on, but Xylophonic Steel will beat Sir Wang Don. It's got tight for third, though, between Benson, Toots, and... Uh... Reggae 6 winners, 765,000, dollars And that was a good day for Reggae 6 players. 5.9 million plus in that carryover. And we had a net pool of 15.25 million. If you noticed, your weights had on all six of the winners and uh, your tips there two first choice winners one on the regular six one second choice winner one one third choice winner one and two fourth choice winners one so you had the regular six on your programs and uh, that would have been a, a great guide uh, for you to hit the jackpot today with that good payout in the regular six let's take note on the early pick five on mandatory payout this time at 191 with 2.88 million plus in the pool and we have 428 tickets starting on toilet six now the winner was at 14 to 1. And congratulations are in order to Kerry Tucker, more popularly known as Music Man, registering his first career win. And I told you at preview time, Music Man teaming up with Hardball. And that combination turned out to be a winning combination. Xylophonic Seal ridden to perfection coming from off the pace this time around. And that indeed made a great difference there. A first time win for a newly licensed trainer, Kerry Tucker. And a massive 14 to 1 upset win from his four year old Philly, Xylophonic Steel who responded to the calls from the whip of the hard-riding jockey, Robert Halladine. The eighth race on the Sunday card was a restricted allowance event for native-bred four-year-olds and up, non-winners of three, importees four years old and up, non-winners of two. 
an 8 horse field set to go the 6 furlongs or 1200 meters trip with the best backed horse Royal Ash breaking from gate number 8. They were off and racing a very good line. Right on the inside, that's a digital light. Joy's Golden rushing up. Also right there, that's Mrs. Slinders. Behind them, that's Royal Ash. Right beside Royal Ash, that's Hot Stepper. Then comes Huntsman recovering and racing at the back of the field. She's my hedge fund. Joy's Golding on about a two-length lead from Digital Light Racing in second. Right against the rail and coming on, that is a Hot Stepper. Also recovering and really coming mm -hmm. down into it now. That is a Royal Ash, but it is making the runnings. It is still Joyce Golden in front, about three lengths in front. Here comes on the outside Huntsman, right between horses. That's Royal Ash, right against the rail and coming on. That is Digital Light, but it's Joyce Golden still with that lead. Huntsman begins to come forward nicely. It's Joyce Golden in front. Huntsman trying to get to Joyce Golden, also running on. That's Royal Ash, right against the rail. Digital Light, and now Huntsman has joined Joyce Golden. This is where the race lies. Also coming on fast. That is. D digital light, but now Huntsman hits the front, and Chris Bamdeen on 200 wins. Congratulations to Chris Bamdeen, a milestone. Huntsman beats Joyce Gold, and then comes Royal Ash and Digital Light. Good ride by Christopher Mamdeen, 2019 champion jockey, getting his milestone 200th win aboard Huntsman. And Huntsman ran on to be strongest at the finish. Joyce Golden tried to make all as expected, but the final furlong there was a bit too taxing for Joyce Golden. However, she held on for second and the exact return 660, the Quinella return 502. Dollars. Let's take it on on the early pick five on Monday to Pure Day, stands at 62 with 2.88 million in that net pool. So you're onto some big dividends there already in your pick five. And the Twilight at six, down to 98 live tickets with 4.239 million plus in that net pool. So you're onto big dividends there as well for the Twilight at six. An exceptional display of riding from the 2019 champion jockey, Christopher Mamdeen aboard the feared Huntsman, lands a milestone victory. The Allen E. Billy Williams Memorial Trophy running his honor he was named champion trainer in 1964, 1968, and 1969, an overnight allowance event for three year olds and up, with a modest field of nine set to go a distance of 1,400 meters or seven furlongs. Now he's ready. They're off for the Allen Billy Williams Memorial Trophy. Gilbert blows the start, left a long way back as the field now make their way toward the final six. Mamma Mia, as expected, gets that lead. Captain Calico on the outside in pursuit. Atlantic Convoy running smoothly in third and watching the front two as they charge away toward the five. Further and beyond, a further four lengths back in behind that one. Freedom Street is a length and a half away. The head cornerstone a length back as they leave the five. Money Monster asked to make progress on the outside. A gap of six to Gilbert. And at the back of the field, it's Fly, a messenger fly, as they're arriving at the half mile and go running into the turn. Mamma Mia continues to lead. Captain Calico now chasing, just needs to find two lengths to get to the leader. Atlantic Convoy is four and a half lengths back and running in third, followed by further and beyond as they slip past the three. Four more to the head cornerstone. Freedom Street now making ground on the rail. Money Monster in behind them, then Gilbert. And forget Fly, messenger fly, as the field come thundering into the top of the lane. They're at the corner. The pole, Mamma Mia drifting off a true line. Captain Calico looks to have got a bounce on the outside. Atlantic Convoy is running on the rail. Freedom Street in be rather further and beyond in between horses and now further and beyond begins to challenge Mamma Mia. Here is Atlantic Convoy charging upon the rail. These three lock together as they drive inside the final 16th further and beyond Mamma Mia. And Atlantic Convoy in a drive to the line further and beyond and... Gone by with Atlantic Convoy too close to call, then Mamma Mia, Captain Calico, and Freedom Street. What a finish, sir, to the Alan E. Billy Willard Memorial Trophy. Quite fitting for the caliber trainer. And I tell you, Tevin Foster and Christopher Mandine, inseparable at the finish line there with Atlantic Convoy and further on beyond, further on beyond, former horse of the year. And Atlantic Convoy told him about that one, expected good things on that one for 2024, now four years old, and he's really going to mature into a very nice colt inseparable at the finish there bringing the house down a fitting race result for the day's feature event with an almost picture perfect result literally a fine display of riding by both jockeys and when the smoke cleared they were inseparable at the line resulting in a dead heat between the well-deserved three-horse atlantic convoy and the seven horse further and beyond mamma mia captain calico and freedom street were the other top five finishers
Another thrilling weekend of racing highlighted by that scintillating finish in Sunday's Race 9 feature event where the performances from both jockeys and horses were deemed perfect and inseparable, resulting in a dead heat finish. This has been another edition of the Kimanus Park Highlight Show. See you next time.